And our next story is from Pakistan. It has been trying to negotiate with a homegrown terror group, the Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan, the TTP. We will tell you how those talks are faring in a bit. But first, some context. Starting with the TTP itself, what is it? It's an umbrella organization of various terror outfits in Pakistan and this group is separate and distinct from the Afghan Taliban but has many Taliban veterans serving in its ranks. The TTP has two primary objectives. One, oust the civilian government in Islamabad and two, rule Pakistan in accordance with the Sharia law. Since August 2021, the Taliban seized, that's when the Taliban seized control of Kabul. The TTP has grown both in strength and number. Its members have regrouped in the country's north. They have unleashed a spate of attacks as well on Pakistani citizens. The attacks are proving to be a big challenge for Islamabad. It is trying to bring the TTP leaders to the talking table and negotiate peace. The talks began in the month of June, four months and several confidence building measures later, the talks are stuck in stalemate. The TTP is only growing fiercer. Have a look at what happened just two weeks back. On the 10th of October, a day after the 10th anniversary of the shooting of Malala Yousafzai, unidentified armed men opened fire on a van carrying schoolgirls Two students were injured. The van's driver lost his life. The attack unfolded in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's uh, Swat Valley. All evidence indicated that it was the TTP that was behind it. And since then, there have been large-scale protests in the region with people from all walks of life hitting the streets, demanding that the government protect their children and institutions. Listen in to these voices from just a few days back. We are protesting because this unrest from the attacks in SWAT has destroyed our peace and tranquility. The future of our children is at stake. We call on the government to bring the peace. Are the troublemakers of SWAT being targeted? No. These are just peaceful people who want peace. We can't carry more coffins. Peace is our last demand. If the government can't bring peace, we don't need these institutions that are living on our tax money. We just need peace. You heard that. We just need peace. What is the Pakistan government trying to ensure, uh, trying to do to ensure that there is peace? It is trying to convince the TTP into a ceasefire besides establishing armed presence in the region, and both its efforts are failing miserably. Under the ceasefire agreement, Islamabad released hundreds of TTP terrorists from jail. They were sent back to their homes as a gesture of peace. But reports say that instead of returning home, these men have rejoined the TTP's ranks. Some have even crossed borders to work for the Afghan Taliban. The second step that Islamabad took was ramping up its security presence. Hundreds of armed forces and intel operatives have been posted in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region, but they are no match for a resurgent tehreek e taliban In the last six months, there have been 434 terror attacks on Pakistan's security forces. They have claimed the lives of over 323 security personnel and left 132 others severely injured. Most of these attacks have been attributed to the TTP. What does this tell you? That the TTP has become a thorn in Pakistan's flesh, a rotten apple which Pakistan itself nurtured and is now paying a heavy cost for doing that. But despite the ab abysmal state of affairs there, Pakistan has the audacity of telling others on how they should engage with terror groups. Case in point being the United States of America, Pakistan recently offered to help America in facilitating talks with the Afghan Taliban. Guess what Washington has told Islamabad? We don't need your help. 
those were the exact words spoken. In a recent interview, the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan categorically snubbed Pakistan's unwarranted offer. He said, we don't need Pakistani delegates or the Pakistani airspace for any sort of engagement with or an operation in Afghanistan. Now, on the political front, Imran Khan, Pakistan's former prime minister, in two days from now is set to launch a nationwide rally in Pakistan, the Hakiki Azadi March. He says it will be the biggest protest march in Pakistan's history, one that will rid the people from the quote-unquote thieves imposed upon them. What does he mean by that? How long will this march continue for? Is it aimed at removing Shehbaz Sharif from power? No one really knows. But Imran Khan is calling it a war for the future of Pakistan, a statement that leaves little to doubt about his intentions. Today I've decided to launch the long march from Friday at 11 a.m. from Liberty Square in Lahore to Islamabad. We will gather there, God willing. I will lead the march. The government should conduct fair and transparent elections in the country. They should let the people decide. There is no other way out other than elections. The country is also making headlines for the mysterious killing of a journalist, Arshad Sharif, a 49-year-old investigative reporter who was killed by the police in Kenya. This incident unfolded on Sunday night. The journalist was traveling in his car. He failed to stop at a checkpoint in Nairobi. The police opened fire. The journalist died. Kenyan authorities say it was a case of mistaken identity, one that concerned a car involved in an abduction case. The journalist's past is of interest here. Sharif was highly critical of the Pakistan army, so much so that he had to leave Pakistan in August this year because charges of sedition were filed against him. Naturally, his death has stunned Pakistan's media fraternity. It is demanding a detailed probe into the incident. So at the end of the day, this is the state of affairs in Pakistan, a terror group unleashing havoc, a former prime minister fostering public dissent and a slain journalist making news for the mysterious circumstances around his death. Same old story in Pakistan, albeit with new twists and turns. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.